is April 24th, 2023, episode 280 of the Should I Play This Game podcast, Graham Banks. How are you, sir? Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> I remembered all the stuff. Yeah, you would have. I, remember I can press, read. I remember to press play on the, on the audio this time and screw it and up. Not, <laughs> and not fade to black. <laughs> yeah. Off to an absolute uh, ball terror of a start so far. Excellent. Yep. So I'm, getting used to this thing. And it's always best when you point it out, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, is it just me, or has there not been much in the way of video game news? Yeah, it's been very, very, very quiet. Um, I think there's only been one sort of biggish item, and that was Sega buying Rovio for $700 million. Uh, Sony bought someone as well. Sony bought Farscape. Okay. I believe Farscape Games off the top of my head. Yeah, but they bought somebody. Yeah. But uh, the, on, the biggest sort of ongoing news that I've been sort of keeping aware is this. I don't, if you've been, I don't know if you've been reading about it. It was the darker and darker stuff on the Steam. That's been that's, fucked. That's because been... a lot of people really liked that um, demo during the, the next fest. Yeah. That's probably and that's been the most interesting just to observe on the, on, the, on the periphery. But yeah, that's probably the only thing I've been really sort of keeping tracks on. Other than the, yeah, purchasing coming up like that. But, you know. But that's for um, the beginning and the end, maybe, if we decide to do it. Indeed. Yeah, that's a really shitty fucking situation, that one. Did yet another situation of publisher being dickbag and all that no, sort of stuff. No, it's but... not that at all. <laughs> oh, is it? No, it's no, a no. more complicated than that. If you actually read the lawsuit... The Iron Mace are fucking stupid. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, no, this is this is not one. This does not appear at this stage to be that case. Yeah, there's a lot of. Um, anyway, we're getting to we We're going. We're getting to that later. But um, let's get into that later. I can't. I I did a quick cursory look of the internet to find out who Sony bought because I saw it last night. I thought it was Farscape Studios. I think I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> so um, it didn't work out nicely. So. Primarily, we talk about the games that we've played. Yep. I actually have a must-listen. Yep, so I do I. need to remember to do that this time, but uh, we'll get to that. I have one as well. A must-listen? Mm-hmm. Get out of town! Is it clutch? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's the Dredge soundtrack, isn't it? No, no, <laughs> no. All right. Over two. I'll, I won't go for the third just yet. Uh, shall we talk about the games we have been playing? We should. Let me do some fancy... Barn Door. What does that look like? Here we go. Yeah, it's a bit average. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, it's not, it's, it, that could have been that could have been more impressive. Could but have been more impressive. at least it didn't fade the entire thing to black. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Look Remix here. is tough. <laughs> I'm not even looking at it. <laughs> I didn't know this. Apparently, you can set the stream deck up to actually change inputs on your monitor. Yeah, you probably can. It's just like a, that's it's, fucking cool. It's just a. But anyway. Yep. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Graham, you are still playing Nino Kuni Two. How many yes. hours are we at? Um. Ooh, that's a good question. I should have taken. No. Uh, less than fifty. So you haven't, you've been, have you been leaving it idle for a period of time? No, not at all. No, I haven't done that not at yet? all yet. All no. right. So that's yeah, actually, that's actual, it's pro probably, yeah, it's probably, probably, probably played 20 hours, I suppose, this week, a couple of hours each night. It's hmm. my wind down game, so, yeah, no, that's, I do actually, yeah, I, I've gone back on the soundtrack on that game. That soundtrack is really fucking good. The problem is the game just repeats it over and over again. And that's the problem. Mm. But the, if you listen to the soundtrack in sort of isolation, it's really good. It's with the like a top-notch orchestra in Japan, like the Philharmonic Orchestra of Japan or something. Is is this on the soundtrack? So it's not as if they've got a <laughs> a low-level um, you know orchestra on that one. It is it is yeah, it is really really kind of good. But yeah, the problem with the game is that, not that I could show it in the in the video we did last weekend, but. Um, the, the music just gets repeated and looped over and over again. So that's the big. I wonder if that's a case of they just didn't record that many tracks. They didn't. Well, they recorded it's about thirty-two tracks on the soundtrack, so it's not a it's not a okay. short amount. But you can't use thirty-two tracks and have a hundred-hour game and not have any repeating. That's true. 
so that's that's really the the, the thing uh, but yeah they just repeat the same thing over and over again a lot and it's the because the music's not necessarily like the music gets played in at the right time during cutscenes and stuff like that which makes perfect mm. sense but when you're playing that same sort of music in the middle of just action scenes or just just walking around the music can get this really high, you know, swelling and really important things happening. All you're doing is walking across the environment, so <laughs> it just doesn't doesn't line up. Oh, all no. the top. <laughs> you think oh, something happens? You just have this expectation that something bad is yeah, happen. Yeah, but then nothing ever happens. You just go, it's just the music is not, you know, doesn't always line up properly. But when you listen to it in isolation, it's actually a really good soundtrack. A really good soundtrack. So anyway, does it slap as the kids would say? I don't know <laughs> exactly. <laughs> is it a bop? Uh, no, it's a banger. <laughs> a banger. It's Fuck a banger. Yeah. <laughs> it's a banger. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's I've been playing that a lot. Um, and this, and just before we started recording, uh, I, I played Tron Identity for like five minutes. Um, that looks really cool. Um, sounds really cool. Um, but I'm not. I'm not going to say anything more than that. Uh, I have played probably another couple of hours of Dredge, uh, following on from our um, video from from which I think launched Wednesday. Was it? I, I think that was the Monday video. Was I was think the Monday, Nino was the Wednesday, Wednesday video. Yeah. Was the Wednesday video. Yeah. So I've played that another couple of hours. Really, really enjoying that. Like it's that's a really a really neat game. Um, not mm. not more than much. Not much more to add than what we said on the video, but um, having now played it for a little bit longer, um, it's it's just got a lot of neat mechanics to it. Yeah. Um, I've had a couple of times where I was in. Uh, I can't remember. The, there's an island, a set of islands, Gale Cliffs. I think they are. I think they're called something like that. Cliffs Gale something. Anyway, um, and I went sort of sort of use my boat and go through the sort of the 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 back rivers of that little island area and this big friggin' monster thing came from the ocean and uh, yeah, hit, my, hit, my boat, an hit my boat and damaged it. Um, luckily I had enough money to, to A, repair it and B, had enough engine to get back. Otherwise that could have mm. been really interesting. Um, that big fucker's an asshole. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sort of still just now getting, starting to get into the story a little bit more. I've sort of, I've got the dredge. I've got that guy. Um, I've upgraded my one of the rods to be able to do is it shallow and oceanic? shallow oceanic oh, there's three levels what is it coastal so shall... coastal yes i've got a i've now got a i've got a rod that can do all three of those which is good yep and i've got a dredge so at this stage i've got all things covered which is cool really good yeah, um, you don't need the other the other types of rods until you get to i think the next set of islands which then you need them or oh. No, I think Abyssal... Oh, I can't remember which one's next, if it's Abyssal or Mangrove that you really need next, but... Yeah. Sorry. Have you run into a dude asking for fish yet and just ripping its hearts out? Uh, oh, only the one we did during the during video where they, they took out a, a handkerchief or something. That's what gave yeah, me the. Yeah. That's, what, that's what got me the dredge, but no. Nah, you, you'll come across, like, there's, I think, four of them, like, different men in hoods. And they I've, literally I've, just I've, look like death. I've got one hood. I've met one hooded character so far. He's asked mm. for four fish that I've never seen before yet, so I don't know where I'm going to yep. get them. Um, so, yeah, I haven't actually got to them, not not delivered them their fish yet. <laughs> um, yeah, it may end up taking too long and he may end up dying. Oh, who cares? Oh. Yeah, you just don't get a book from him. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, I like the book system. The book system's good. Like The book system's neat. So the, the, what we're seeing there is there is a... Um, so you've got a bunch of upgrade options for your boat. You can buy new rods to be able to do deeper, deeper fishing. You can um, buy engines to make your boat go faster. You can upgrade the hull. I haven't got to this level yet, level yet, but you can upgrade your hull to make it hold more and stuff like that. But what you can also do is you can have these passive, I guess they're passive boots essentially, mm. that you gain by getting these books from various NPC characters. As long as they're on on in your cabin, they get read over a period of time. You don't you don't have to actually do anything to do it. They just get read over time. Then once they're read, you get a passive bonus from it. Like one of them was like, um, I can't remember what, what the name of the thing was, but ten percent chance not to um not to deplete, deplete the, the fishing deplete, area yeah, with the rod. Yeah, that sort of thing. So just a little passive boost like that, which just makes it 
Uh, just a little bit neater. Um, I've got the the haste um, sort of yeah. engine boost thing, my Bob. So I've just got that from that same. Um, uh, so there's a, one of the characters is asking me to collect a bunch of stuff. Yep. Um, so I've, I gave him one thing, and then he gave me this boost thing to my boat. Um, yeah, look, look, it's just got a lot of like, the soundtrack's really neat. Visual, as we're saying in the in the in the in the video, is it's really really visually striking, and it's a really nice I love looking the look game. Of it. The look of the game is really nice when you're just out on the sea. Um, and the character art when they come up when they're static images is like it's. It's really, really good as well. Like it's just this. Mm. I'm sure that's. I'm sure that name of art's got a got a name, but I'm not too sure what it is. Like it's a really sort of um, sort of low poly, low like poly, twisted, but sort of but like, fucked up. But like lots of angles on the faces and that sort of stuff. So it's yes, a, very angular. Yeah, so I'm sure. I'm sure it's got a name that style. But angular I, I, or angular? Huh? Ah, get it? Because yeah. you're a, ah, yeah. ah, <laughs> All right, there's our episode title. <laughs> yep. It'll find Slack. There it is. Uh, um, yeah, so it's... A, it's. I, yeah, I'm really digging it. Um, I think it's a game that you would probably play in relatively short bursts would be my, my thing. I mean, you could probably... You probably could... Main, it for you, you probably could mainline it a couple of hours. Yeah, but you could probably play it in sort of one to two hour chunks, you know, over three or four. I smashed sessions. the last, like, five or six hours out in, I think, one shot. Yeah, I can make, I, I can see you doing that as well, but I can easily see you just doing that in one, you know, a couple mm. of sessions a time. But, um, yeah, like, really, really enjoying it. Um, and that's it. I have a correction. You have a correction? I have a correction. Okay. On the last podcast, I said it was Eldritch. Uh, Eldritch Horror. It's not. It's Lovecraftian. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, Lovecraftian being a subgenre, I think of Eldritch cosmic horror. Mm-hmm. I don't know the fucking difference, <laughs> but truth in advertising, truth in podcasting. Uh, um, yeah. So that that yeah. sort of man, that that manifests in uh, the panic that sets into your mm. to your character when he's on. And the... some of the some of the sort of like what the, the, that, the, that that big fish you talking big, about yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it's it's just got a. Um, yeah, just a. There's an overwhelming sense of dread. Yeah. To it all. Yeah, for sure. And it's yeah, it's all sorts, but like it's not a like a nasty sort of it's mean not, it's, dread. It's not jump scare stuff. It's not. No. It's not. It's not horror. Like it's not you know gross looking pictures. Of, you know. Oh, I don't know. Some of those some of those aberrations are pretty gross. Oh, they can be, but yeah, like that's not <laughs> it's, it's not blood and guts kind of stuff that you would somebody no. should have, but. Um, yeah, it's just that over, over, overarching, overhanging. Something's going to go wrong. Something, you know, kind of thing. And it just, it's, it just the 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 sense that the game portrays of that stuff is really, really good. Um, it's just really, really well done. And yeah, the mechanic of fishing is good. Um, I took a little while getting used to the dredging stuff because that's a little bit different. Um, yes. But it's it's same concept. You've got a You've got two, I think it's at least two wheels that are going at yep. different speeds, and each of them seems to have a little notch in them. You just basically got to move your little something going move back and forth between them, so that they arrow between the two lanes, and... so that so they don't hit these block things in the middle of it. And yeah. again, it doesn't. There's no impact necessarily if you don't if you keep hitting them, but it just slows things down essentially, um, mm. which is good. So um, yeah, like it's 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 just a a really solid game, and it's sort of yep. kind of kind of out of nowhere in, in a way, but uh, it. It is kind of hard to put your finger on what it is that makes it as engaging as it actually is because, yeah, like, you look at it and it's disparate pieces, and it's like these are good, yeah, but you wouldn't think it combines to make this game that's one of the best of the year so far. Yeah, exactly. Like, like it's yeah, like you've got a, a fairly straightforward fishing mechanic. Like, it's really just mm. it's really just a quick time event essentially. You've got a fairly straightforward traversal mechanic. You're just guiding ship around. That's really straightforward. You've got some very straightforward story stuff, you know, basically go here, do this, come back kind of stuff. So that's really mm. good. But the overall putting all that stuff together with the story and the characters they've created, it just friggin' works really, really yeah. well. It just works, and it's it's such a. I mean, this might sound really sort of derogatory, but it's just a simple thing that is just really well executed. Um, Sometimes simple works really well. Yeah, it, it it just in this case it is really really good. Um, and I could definitely see why you were saying in the last podcast, and maybe even during the video as well, that this is definitely up in your 
best thing you've played so far this year kind of thing. I can definitely see that. Um, even from the, the two and a half, two and a half hours I've played of it so far, I can definitely say it's going to... I am going to definitely finish it, which would be yeah. a, new, a rare thing for me. Um, and, yeah, I can see it being a really, you know, really good, um, you know. Yeah, so but I, that... ended up, I ended up finishing it mm-hmm. um, in, about, in about 10 hours. Um, yep. I, there were three pursuits I didn't find. One of them we did in the video. Um, and part of it was just there were a couple of those smaller islands that weren't part of the main... I guess, quest that I just didn't go to. Yeah, okay. Because yeah, I ended up yeah. looking up a guide to find that, and there's also a secret ending. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. But, yeah. So I ended up looking up a guide to do those and t- to tidy that up. Um, but, yeah, I I really, really liked it, that thing. Yeah. Mm. And it's, it's this really cool contained piece where it's like, it doesn't need a sequel. There's no real no. room for a sequel. No. I'd be I mean, very curious to see what this this what this group does next. Yeah, exactly. Like they've they've sort of similar to um, you know super, super giant games of the past. You know, mm. each time they make, every time they make a game, you're always curious. Well, oh, what's their game genre going to be this time? Kind of thing. Um, that's they've that this group this developers is now on that radar for me. What what are they going to do mm. next? Are they going to do something in the same vein or something completely different? Um, do they do something in the same vein, but set it in a completely different setup? Do they make it now your same concept, but now you're driving a car around and doing similar sort of stuff? I don't know. You know, that sort mm. of thing. Like, what can they can they take that, you know, concept and expand it to, or transpose it to a different type of mechanic? I don't know. But yeah, you're mm. right. I mean, keeping an eye on them going forward is definitely something I'll be doing. But yeah, what a, what a, what a cool thing. Yeah, it is really, yeah, it's really, really good. Really cool. Um, yeah, it ticks a lot of boxes, but then, as I said, as I was saying earlier, it puts it together this absolutely brilliant package. Mm. Um, that, yeah, looking at it in its bits, in the constituent parts, you go, ah, oh, that seems fairly boring, but no, nah, the way they've done it, it's it's really good. Mm. So, but that's some, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's it for you. me. That's me done. So, um, yeah. So, uh, I've been getting back into Apex a bit, mm-hmm. partly because. The, just looking at what a, what there is for me to play, I'm kind of like, eh, let's play Apex. Um, and it turns out it's less... It, there is a bit of skill gap issue where you get people jumping and ducking and doing all sorts of weird movement shit that pisses me off. But it's the shitheaded cockheads that just yelling into microphones being assholes that really make me hate that game. <laughs> so multi- I just mute them. Send those online multiplayer games in general then. Yeah. <laughs> it's just people, people being the dickheads, acting like they're 14, or sometimes actual 14-year-olds. Yep. <laughs> like, so I mute, I just, like, turn the voice chat all the way down, and you can actually mute, when you mute people, it doesn't just mute voice chat, it mutes text chat as well. Oh, really? Oh, okay, that's interesting. Okay. So, like, instead of getting mute. people just typing shitty things in... You, do, you don't get any of you it You just all. mute that completely as well. Okay, that's that's good. That's actually good. And you can also mute people's pings. So when you get someone just constantly just pinging a specific spot const- over and over and over, yeah, okay. you just mute that. You're like, I, I'm not even listening to you. <laughs> um, But yeah, I did that for Friday Night Fight Night and <laughs> this week, and it went fucking badly. <laughs> I don't think I had a match where I got more than 500 damage. And I was like, ah, oh, this is going to be terrible. And it was. God damn it. Um, so I finished Tron Identity. I played mm-hmm. through it in a single two-hour spot. Mm-hmm. Um, they try and do a bit of the Daft Punk soundtrack. Mm-hmm. But do it in a way that makes it so they don't get any uh, copyright <laughs> infringement. <laughs> More suits, so it sounds too Euro trash to be like real proper good Daft Punk Tron music. Um, I think it's written pretty well, but man, do they get a bit verbose and a bit over the top in the talky talky department? Yep, yep. Um, I could not figure out the puzzle in that thing. I just bum fucked my way through that. Didn't that's not the way you should describe that. <laughs> I just bumbled my way through that part, the um, the puzzle on the discs, like. I understood you ma- okay, match numbers, match symbols. All right, sure. But there's then restrictions on how far along the disc you can match and all that sort of deal. Mm. So I just randomly bumbled my way through that and finished those. Um, it is an interesting so- like side story for the Tron universe. Mm-hmm. Um, 
there is room for at least a second playthrough to get achievements, but I would only want to do the, maybe one more. Mm. And if I didn't get all those achievements in one shot, I'd be kind of annoyed. Yeah. Yep. Um, so like, I'm happy to just do the one playthrough and leave it at that. Oh, it's it's mm. fine. Mm. Um, Bloodhound, first day in hell. Um, I did a video of this, um, a checkout that is on the YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, not Bloodhound from Apex, but its own game, uh, prologue for an upcoming boomer shooter. Okay. Yep. Um, like that old school sort of quake style. Mm -hmm. It's pretty by the numbers for one of those sorts of things, but it's also really fun. Yep. Like uh, particularly because the prologue was free. Just running through and just busting fools with this like shotgun. You get other guns, like you get this crossbow and you get some weird like dual wielding rifle thing, mm. but the shotgun just shits all over it. Yep. So the shotgun you get in the first five minutes, I use for the rest of the other twenty five minutes of the prologue. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's uh, but it's still really quite fun. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing a how like how much Bloodhound actually costs when it comes out is going to be the biggest factor. Mm. as to whether I think it's something you stick with. Um, but not quite on the par of a like a Dusk. I think Dusk is like a really top tier one of those. Mm -hmm. But I really enjoyed the at least the prologue. Mm -hmm. um, Golfinite is kind of procedurally generated golf story with less story. <laughs> um, so you start it off, you, get, you go into this menu where there's four courses and you, there's a coach and he's like, oh, you're the new, you're new kid, eh? All right, let's go through the let's go through the the basics of playing golf. Mm -hmm. And he takes it to a course and there's portals on it and there's little turtles that if you hit him in the circle, the turtle will just go into a shell and slide into your ball. <laughs> so that, there's those elements of golf story to it. Mm. Um, it is pretty simple. It's like a three-click thing, but mm. the courses get more and more fucked. Yeah, okay. Like, the last course has got multiple sets of portals and multiple sets of, like, different animals that just do fucked up shit to your ball. So what does like, the portal, have, it'll what have... Does the, what does the portal do to the ball? Just make it go somewhere completely out of the... Completely bongers, or... Sometimes it can go forward. Sometimes you can go all the way back. Uh, okay, so it's just a randomised kind of a action. No, there's... There's actually... Like, when you bring up the overall map of the hole, you can see the different coloured portals, so they in, are in oh, okay. pairs. Okay, yep. So you can see where one would go in and out. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yep, yep. Um, but yeah. The sc like, if you land in the scorpion circle, the scorpion just scuttles over and stabs the ball with its tail. <laughs> and then the, the ball just goes, poof. <laughs> I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> um, I think, I think, uh, and like, there's only one achievement I don't have, and that's to get 10 holes in one. Okay. But, Yeah. It, it's fine for what it, it was like less than 10 bucks as well for that mm. it's well and truly worth it mm. uh relic hunters legend is a game that um gearbox is publishing no oh, okay it's which true. i actually didn't know that I, I i signed up for the um to get beta access ages ago i must have done and i just completely forgot about it <laughs> and they got an email going hey you got access to the closed beta i'm like all right cool so i did a video um it's sort of like a top down destiny sort of vibe in that you do you go to these social areas, get missions, and then you're going on sort of multiplayer events to make pro to progress those missions. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So like, there's a real Destiny vibe to it, but the gameplay loop and the actual playing of it isn't quite as satisfying as Destiny. Because mm -hmm. Destiny just really has those super solid first-person shooter mechanics. This is more a top-down dual joystick shooter. Mm. Um, and the, like, the loot's not 100% awesome, but you get some decent stuff. It has a super great look to it. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm looking at um, our internet game database link that we're going to put onto the show mm. notes, and it, yeah, I'm looking at the screenshots on here, it does look kind of neat, yeah. The the look of it is probably the, the best and most impressive thing about it. Mm. Mm. Um, the actual playing of it is fine, mm. but I wouldn't play any more than what I did. It's like, yeah, yeah okay, cool, played it, done. Yep. Moving on. Uh, Lone Fungus is a Mushroidvania. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Mushroidvania. You're a mushroom, it's a Metroidvania. Okay. <laughs> um, it's pretty fun from a traversal and combat perspective, but like, 
there are a large number of abilities and spells to the point where I don't even think I got half of them. Okay. Yep. Um, and for a for a decent period of time until you get to this big mushroom, it goes. You need all of these abilities to actually get through to the end. You don't know what you're getting and what you're meant to be doing. Uh, okay. Yep. So it's a little. Once bit you talk yeah. to that big mushroom, it's like, oh, here's the ones you don't have on your map. I'm like, all right, fine. Yep. And there's like particularly towards the end, it was just a lot of like exploration shit where you're going back in the spots because it's not just like, oh, hey, I can go back here specifically. It's, oh, there's a room here or there's a gate here. Can I go through it? Okay. Get yeah. there. Oh, fuck. No, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was about 10 hours. Um, it was fine for what it was. I mm -hmm. enjoyed it enough. Would I tell someone else to play it? Maybe not. Well, considering there's so but many games, there's so many games in that genre now. Like it's got to have mm. to, it's kind of has to best <clears throat> stand out in some aspect of it to be able to really yeah. recommend it these days. You can buy this in a pack with Haiku the Robot, which is a Metroidvania that came out last year, an independent one. But mm. I think again by a, a small or single developer, yep. that is way better than this. I yeah, really okay. enjoyed Haiku the Robot way more than I enjoyed Lone Fungus. Mm. Um, like the name though. But you, huh? Like the name. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's fine. Mm. Uh, Wild Frost. Um, hey, if people have played Slay the Spire or Monster Train, then you kind of know what you're getting with Lone Frost. Only it's uh, sorry, Wild Frost. It's just way more fucked than that. <laughs> because like. I don't feel like you're equipped to succeed. So you're just running into the wall constantly. And there's like a meta game where you get a, like a town you're building and things like that. So there's certain objectives you're hitting, but you're sort of largely the whims of RNG and mm. you just what sometimes you walk into situations and it's like, it's completely unwinnable. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you're just like, bang, 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 dead. Oh, <laughs> um, but it has an amazing art style for one of those sorts of games. Mm. Um, I love the look of it, but man, does playing it make you feel like a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> and like, there's there's a thread on the Steam discussions board, like, oh, how's your, how's your progress going? All this. And some people are like, oh, I've played like 12 runs, I've won six. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> but like, yeah. There, there's one dude who was like, "Oh, it makes it feel like I'm not, I'm not playing the game right, or, or it's too hard for me." And it's like, it's not a skill issue, dog. <laughs> it's literally just you need to get the right cards at the right time, and if you don't, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I think I'm done. I don't think I want to keep running into that wall with this. Like, mm. I, there are deck building sort of roguelikes that are fine. Like Slay the Spire is the yeah. big one that most people hold up as the ultimate. Yeah. And I really enjoyed Monster Train, but like the way you, it's so difficult to balance that repeatability while making it sort of, you don't want people to just finish it every single run. Oh yeah, for sure. So how do you balance that difficulty is a real, real difficult question. It just seems like this one just goes, Hey, guess what? Fuck you. <laughs> Um, I had one, I've had one run where I've gotten fur, like into the third quote unquote world. Okay. And that like, and maybe I think two or three runs where I've gotten into the second world and that's it. Yeah. Okay. And that's across like three hours. <laughs> so yeah, it's all sorts of fucked. <laughs> um, and I said I was going to do it and I've started it. The dead space remake. Me. Um, that thing is fucking awesome. <laughs> Like I remember just enough about the original Dead Space to be a, to be sort of dangerous to myself. Mm -hmm. um, but even then, like even knowing some of the parts and all that sort of deal, they've added element. They've added side missions to it. They fleshed certain things out. Um, it looks fucking amazing. Mm, I'm just thinking it's like from a technical perspective, it looks fucking incredible. Yeah. Um, and yes, it's building off a xbox 360 game that at the time looked great mm. but the level of detail and stuff like that they're putting into it now is just amazing um i don't i'm not a massive fan of the zero gravity stuff that they do but you're only in those sections for short periods of time 
Mm. Um, so it's not too big a drama. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really impressed with the side missions they added. It just adds something additional to your actual main, main objective. Mm. And Isaac talks in this one. He oh, didn't okay. talk in the first one, okay. in the original. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just playing through a couple of, uh, couple of uh, chapters at a time. Uh, I think I'm at the start of chapter nine. Mm-hmm. So I've got four left. Oh, okay. So you've gone through it pretty so quick. It's fairly short. Mm, um, 12 chapters, about an hour each chapter. Oh, okay. Yep. But you wouldn't want it to drag much longer than that. Yeah. Um, but mm. yeah, that thing's really cool as well. I really enjoy it. I like the first Dead Space and I like this one. So that's it. Excellent. That's what we done been playing. Should we go to the beginning and the end? We should. We should. Yeah. <laughs> okay, beginning of the end. Um, we talked about it at the top of the show. Couple of uh fuck now I've forgotten the word. Acquisitions. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sega buying Angry Birds developer Rovio for seven hundred million dollars. <laughs> Why? Why would they do that? Mm. I would have thought Angry Birds would be like next to just okay, yep, cool. Angry Birds are sort of on the on the downward decline of pop culture relevance, but uh, Sega thought there was enough there to make to spend that much money on them. Uh. Mm. But. Um, the Sony one. Firewalk Studios is what they bought. Firewalk. All right, I knew it was a studio that started with F. And Firewalk have done in the past. They were kind of already half, I think, half associated with them anyway. I think they were doing a live service game for Sony. Yeah, like they've. I think they've done a lot of like. Um, uh, yeah, like. Like if you see their game, they they will listen to other games because they did some aspect of it, some technical aspect of a particular oh, okay. game. That sort of stuff is what I understand. Um, that they did, yeah. Mm. Yes. Um, so no no word on how much. Um, that Sony spent for that, but. Current owner probably monsters to, be, to help build an original triple A multiplayer game for the PlayStation Five. Yep. Um. Yeah. So yeah, that's another acquisition in a growing growing list of acquisitions. Yep. And that's that's pretty much been it for news. Like yeah, like the it's... main the main news has been like. Dead Island 2 came out, and it's not completely fucked. Yeah. <laughs> like, it came out, it's fine. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, there was a Street Fighter showcase event where they showed off some of the um, World Tour mode and things like that. There's a demo. Okay. Uh, the demo's on PlayStation 4 and 5 right now. It's av- it's going to be available on the 26th slash 27th on PC and uh, Xbox, mm-hmm. which I didn't know was actually uh, 6 was coming out on Xbox. So there's that. Mm, no, I did. I knew it was. Yeah. Um, yep. And there was there was a N- Nintendo Indie World event during the week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I didn't know about until after the fact, and then it's yeah. like oh, I had a bit of a look through the games. It's like, eh. Yeah, I, that's my I mean, got a call looking at article and thing. Eh, nothing there lights me on fire. So yeah, that's cool. Nah. <laughs> um. So realistically, like, there's we've got some must listens which we'll hit in just a mo. But like, when we're talking about releases, there's not a mass. There's a lot numbers wise. Like the last case of Benedict Fox comes out this week, mm-hmm. which that 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 thing was cool. I really enjoyed the demo for that. I wasn't looking forward to that until I played the demo. Um, there's that a game called After Image, which um, I did as one of the Steam Next Fest demos I did videos mm-hmm. I did. Mm-hmm. And uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor comes out at the end of this week. Yeah, that's the that's the big one, obviously. Yeah, that is that is the big one for the week. Uh, the last big one for the month, mm-hmm. uh, because 
By the time we record a podcast next, Redfall will be out. Yeah, let's do. Let's look at May. While well, since we won't actually next one or so, May's. Yeah, you've got Redfall on the second. A couple of days later, you've got Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, no, that's yeah, that's out. That's on, just for the old machines. Old on the consoles, I should say. Um, mm. Darkest Dungeon Two on PC. Yep. Uh, Lego Drive, Lego 2K Drive on the nineteenth. Obviously, Legend of Zelda a couple of days, a week or so before. I was going to say that, you skipped, you skipped the kind of big one there. I kind of missed that. I thought that was later in the month. That's why I didn't see it just then. Um, and that's twenty third Warhammer forty k bolt gun. Yeah, first, yeah, first okay. person, like the sort of old school first person shooter style thing. And System Shock is set for the thirtieth of May. Okay. Yep. Well, so um, I don't know if that's coming out then. Um, enough, Company, Company of Heroes Company 3 has been on. ported to the consoles. I just I didn't realise I was even doing that, I must admit, and that one's yeah. complete, that skipped me. So that's that was announced like a couple of weeks ago, and that's it. Yeah. So. And like, we're like six weeks away from Street Fighter 6 and Diablo 4. Mm, yeah. Um, yes. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't feel right. No. <laughs> oh, God. The ever, the ever, the ever continuing passage of time is going to claim us all. Yep. <laughs> um. All right. Must listens. Yes. Go. Uh. So I went to the cinemas for the very first time. Get in, the fuck out. In probably three and a half years, I guess. I kind of think the last movie I would have seen was pre-pandemic. So mostly sometime in 2019 was the mm. last time I was in a cinema. Uh. Because on the uh, what day was it have been? Days before the album came out, it was the 13th of April. I went to see a Saw global... the Super Mario Brothers movie. Hell, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went and saw the Metallica um, global premiere of their new album. They had us. Uh... They did. They did some stuff in cinemas. So they had. They've released four tracks of the album, um, basically out on YouTube, uh, leading up to this um, this thing. Um, and then I just saw an email from them saying, oh, we're doing these things. So, okay, what if, the, what if Hobart's got us in? Oh, wow, they do. Oh, bugger it, I'll do it. Who cares? It's only 20 bucks. <laughs> um, and they just basically played the entire album um, for the first time, worldwide sort of premiere of the whole thing. Um, and they had, yeah, they had the band members, you know, Lars, James and, and Kirk and um, Robert Trujillo just sort of Robert talking. Robert you know, talking between, you know, leading into each of the songs sort of thing. Um, then just played the songs, basically. Um, I really dig that fucking album. It is really good. I really dig it. Mm. Um, it's their first studio album in a, five or six years, I think. It's been a while. At least, at least five or six. Mm. It's been mm. a while since I think Death Magnet. No, it wasn't Death Magnet. No, it was Health Hardwired to Self Destruct, which I never really got That's into much. That's the one. That was in 2016. So it's been seven years, mm. vaguely since they put it out. Since they put out one. Um, Yes, yeah, called 72 Seasons. Uh, that's the title track as well. We'll add a name of them. Um, yeah, I really like it. Uh, if Darkness Had a Son was probably my... F- if I had a favourite so far, that would probably be it. Um, mm. Followed by Shadows Follow. Um, it's 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 just got some really good... Metallica known for their riffs, and they've, they've, nailed, they've got some really good ones in this one. But James's lyrics this time, I think, are pretty much... I think... Are, some of his best that he's done so um yeah really digging it i'd probably listen to it every couple of days now it's a long album it's like 77 minutes so it's long quite long mm. um so it's quite a fair bit to commit to um but yeah i'm really really liking it um just a pity that they're not coming to australia to tour this year or next so i don't know when they'll be next in australia but um hopefully soonish so cause mm. i think i think they're um oh they're in their sixties now for the vast majority of them, so um, they probably are going to start slowing down on the touring front, I imagine. Mm. So um, I don't know. Could, they could be doing like Rolling Stones type shit, where it's like it's the last tour ever in nineteen ninety four. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like twenty years later. Yep. Still, still doing last it, tour. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So there's a really, really, really like it. There's some there. There's some really good songs. Um, pretty much all of them are now out on YouTube. I think you can basically watch some um, on their official channel, like you, the the music videos as as they are. Um, plus, they've got um, a lyric 
videos as well now, which is a mm. which is a cool thing in like multiple languages too, which is neat. Um, yeah. yeah, I yeah, really digging it. Really, really digging it. It's a really good. It's a I, for me they're a good return to form. I didn't really get into hardwired to self destruct much at all, but um, but this one, yeah, really, really liking it. So yeah, that's my much listen. All right. Um, mine, Brand of Sacrifice, put out a new EP, Between Dreams and Death. Uh, four-track EP, but man, it's fucking good. I've had that on, like, I've listened to it, like, four or five times through, because I had a couple of errands to run before we recorded the podcast, and I just had it on, had that thing on repeat, and man, <laughs> it's got some cool little electronic elements to it, but still just, <laughs> which is always good. <laughs> well, always good to get that heavy, heavy. Um, and Vol Virginia, I think, have a new album coming out this year. And I'm like, oh, shit. Let's go. I wish they'd come back to Australia. They still haven't rescheduled that when that got cancelled. God damn it. Mm. Oh, well. Um, I didn't suppose you checked the email, did you? I could probably do that now. Give me two seconds. Let's have a look at podcast at shouldiplaythisgame.com is the email address. Flick us through some stuff if you've got questions or things you'd like to know. Um, I know there's at least one person on who wants us to see us play Sons of the Forest. Because <laughs> that comes up on a few diff- That comes up as a comment on a couple different videos. Uh, I don't know. It, uh, that might be something dumb I'll do. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe it won't. I don't know. What can I, I can't say yet. I barely know what I'm doing, what I'm going to play next, let alone bloody... Anyway. No emails. No emails? Oh, that's a shame. That that email address again, podcast at shouldiplaythisgame.com. Uh, check out the YouTubes for stuff going up. Um, I've got you... Kicking it old school. I couldn't remember the name of the show for a second. That was dumb. <laughs> Um, where I've started playing Warhammer 40k Space Marine. Uh-huh. And uh, that's pretty fun, particularly with all the British voices yelling out, Space Marine! Because <laughs> apparently orcs are really surprised when they see a Space Marine and they have to yell that out before they start shooting at it. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I will try and take a look at the Street Fighter demo for this week's Friday Night Fight Night. And uh-huh, fair enough. Hopefully there's online in it. Eh, Maybe. <laughs> if because that yeah that would that would be a bit disappointing if there wasn't but whatever that game's coming out in like six weeks holy yeah. shit wouldn't matter what was in that, in that game <laughs> would wouldn't matter what's in that demo that's what they're gonna that's what you're gonna get in six weeks anyway <laughs> pretty much <laughs> pretty much so, so I'll, I'll have a look at the demo first and if there's no online I might not do it for Friday night fight night and but we'll see mm-hmm. um let's call it cool cool wrap it up uh Grand Banks. Thank yeah, you. No worries, sir. And uh, so we'll, go, we'll do at least a couple, probably one or two videos next weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, what they are yet, who can say? Who knows? <laughs> who not, knows? We have not thought that far ahead. <laughs> we barely thought this one far ahead. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, a couple weeks' time, back with another podcast. So uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye. Play the music. I am. Just don't push the button.